Um, Flyby James wants a list of major OEM motor manufacturers. Um, no, there isn't such a list. I will tell you, though, I will just tell you the ones I can think of. Because as, as a, as, <laughs> as the most influential person in all of FPV, apparently, according to a survey, <laughs> I get a lot of people who come to me and say, hey, I want to make an order of motors. And you might be surprised at how little you have to spend to get custom motors made. Now, uh, for a typical hobbyist, it's not worth it. Don't get me wrong, but like an order of perhaps a hundred mo if like if what you want is an existing motor with a custom design on the bell, like you want to put your pilot name or your your local multi GP club, you know, if you just want a custom design on the bell, I mean, you might get away with as few as a hundred motors, and you might spend uh, maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars depending on the motor. Um, if you have, say, $5,000 to spend, and I understand that for most people watching this, $5,000 is an inconceivable amount of money to spend on an order of motors. But for someone who is thinking about OEMing motors, between two and $5,000 is really where you need to be before that starts making a lot of sense, in my opinion. Um, and of course, the more you spend, the more the discounts will go up. But I would say be very careful because when you OEM motors, you, you wouldn't want to spend, say, 20 grand on your first order of motors because it's possible that what you'll get will not be what you wanted. And I'm not saying that the manufacturer will just like screw you over and rip you off. But I am saying that there's always some kinks to work out when you're saying, hey, I want you to make me this product and they're delivering the product and you want to be sure that what you're getting is what you want. So the way it would typically work is you would ask the, assuming that the manufacturer makes the motor that you want already and you're just going for like a cosmetic rebadge or maybe you want a different KV, you, I would say buy some samples of the motor and test them out, make sure they're perfect. And that's your best bet of succeeding at OEMing a motor because they already are making this motor. They're just going to like make a slightly different wind perhaps, but nothing's going to change about the motor. It's just, um, if you want them to do a custom motor, like you want a 2409 motor. I'm, I, I'm not saying you should want, I just made that number up because it's not a size of motor that anybody makes, but you want a 2409 3500 KV motor, something for some stupid reason that only you understand. At that point, you're going to need to pony up some money because they're going to make prototypes for you and they're probably not going to do that for free and they'll send you eight or ten prototypes that you'll test and then once you've, you decide you like them they're going to go to manufacturing and i would say you should order maybe one to three hundred of the motors on the first batch even though they're going to be more expensive than if you had done 500 or a thousand motors um because you're going to get those motors, you're going to test them, and then if they are in some way unsatisfactory, you'll be able to sort that out. And only after you're really confident the manufacturer is delivering what you delivering what you actually want, then you start ordering in the round in the realm of 500 or a thousand, or maybe more than a thousand motors at a time, depending on the volume you're trying to go for. So there's a little uh, you didn't really ask for that, but a little sort of primer on OEMing motors. Uh, as far as who to go to, brother hobby. I'm, Brother Hobby is the classic FPV company who OEMs motors. Um, they, uh, in terms of quality and in terms of, you know, the relationship with the customer, they may not be the best. And by the way, if you have a novel design for a motor and you go to Brother Hobby and you say, can you make me a 2409 3500 KV or some, something? And it turns out that you've, you're onto something, they 100% will start manufacturing that motor and selling it to the to the public. So if you're interested, I mean, that's always a risk when you OEM a product, but if you're interested in keeping it private, I would not go with Brother Hobby. Uh, I know for a fact they've done that in the past. Uh, you know, it's been a while, but. Brother Hobby, T-Motor will do it, but T-Motor has a super high MOQ. Um, I'm not gonna throw numbers and prices out because that would be something I would want you to negotiate with the manufacturer directly. And so I know some numbers and some prices, but I don't think it would be appropriate for me to just throw them out on a live stream. But T-Motor has one of the higher MOQs. Um, 
they also have more expensive motors generally to the retail. So you would expect that they uh, would would have a similar uh, similar thing for their OEMs. Flywoo will OEM motors. Um, VCI Hobby is a company, a relatively new company that will that that I I know will o, OEM motors. VCI Hobby. Um, I would. Uh, yeah, Can I just team. put some perspective yeah. on this question? Yeah. I suspect, uh, at least if I was asking this question, it might be how many OEMs are there that are making all the motors that we see out on the market? Oh, that's like a from tough an, one. You know what I mean? From another angle. Like, yeah. like who's who's on the bottom? You know what I mean? Yeah, I see. Because the thing is, uh, just, to, just to finish that up, almost anybody will OEM motors for you. Like, almost nobody is going to say no. Like um, Emacs is a company that I have tr have talked to about OEMing before, and I in general they don't seem very enthusiastic about it. Uh, like they'll talk to you and they'll give you a price and they'll give you an MOQ, but like it, you you know you sometimes talk to a contractor and you get the feeling they don't really want the work because like they're not super responsive to your messages super fast and the prices they're giving you are kind of high and you just get the feeling that maybe they don't want they don't want to do it. So like almost anybody will do it. RC and Power is another one. You go to RC and Power, they make great motors. They'll OEM you motors, but you're going to you're not going to get as much of a discount because they're such high quality motors. Um, as far as who's making the motors, I don't think it's like batteries. Where like if you look at batteries, the actual cells that go into the batteries, I have the feeling there's not very many manufacturers of those cells. And all these battery companies are buying the cells and then just repackaging them. With motors, I don't think that it's that hard to set up motor manufacturing. Like it's not trivial, okay? But it's like if you're going to cut carbon fiber frames, it's pretty trivial to get started. Motor manufacturing, you have to have some specialized equipment to machine the 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 to ma manufacture the stators. You have to have uh, you know s fairly sophisticated CNC machines to m m mill the bells, um, and and it's it's like a little bit of an investment, but it's not so much that. I've seen companies get started in motor manufacturing and they're just like, yeah, we're going to be a motor manufacturer now, boom, and then they've got their own facility. I I don't get the impression that it's like four companies making all the motors in the world, if that's what you're asking. 